Good morning for those of you on the West Coast. Uh, good afternoon for those of you on the East Coast and hello to everyone else. Um, welcome to part two of our Farm Financing Made Easy event series. Today we'll be talking about navigating the world of farm financing and answering your questions about how to find the financing you need to start your freight farms endeavor. If you missed part one, we were talking about building your business plan, um, thinking through those economics. Uh, the event recording is available on our website where you registered for this event. We'll also be recording today's event and sending it out to everyone tomorrow along with some additional resources. Um, before we get started, uh, we'll have, a, we'll have a, a few questions before we dive into a Q&A towards the end. That said, please submit your questions in the Q&A feature at the bottom of the Zoom. Uh, throughout, we have a team that's monitoring that, so please submit those throughout as they come to you. And I want to be uh, want to welcome our experts today. Uh, we have two industry experts. We have Sammy Teleton, co-founder of FarmRaise, based in San Francisco, and Mark Baines, uh, credit representative from Farm Credit East, based in New Hampshire. Um, I'm going to let them both introduce themselves, uh, but both both experts in the field, both familiar with farm financing. So with that, Sammy, I'll let you introduce yourself. Thank you, Alex. And um, hi, everyone. It's awesome to be here with you all today. I'm excited to dig into this topic. Um, Alex, please let me know if my internet acts up. I won't, uh, I won't be offended if you chime in to say I'm frozen up, uh, but that would be helpful to me. Thank you. Um, so I did not grow up in agriculture. I actually got really interested in agriculture in college after working on a farm in Costa Rica. And then I spent several years at the US Department of Agriculture's Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program, SARE, working with farmers and ranchers in the Midwest to understand how soil health practices like cover crops were impacting their farms, both in terms of ecosystem impacts and economic impacts. I really loved that work. I get a lot of energy from working directly with farmers who I think are the most entrepreneurial folks that I've had the opportunity to, to work with. Um, but cover crops and soil health practices are adopted on less than 5% of US cropland acres. So um, exploring that adoption gap was ultimately what brought me into graduate school at Stanford, where I am currently finishing up my degree while building farm raise, which I'll tell you about here in a minute. Um, I've been studying business and land use and agriculture here with the intention of spinning out into the private sector to try to help farmers adopt sustainability practices like cover crops and soil health. And one of the key challenges farmers face in making those transitions um, is finance, access to capital, both in terms of funding access, so knowing which grant and loan opportunities are out there to help them make the transition, but also in terms of knowing the actual financial impact of transitioning to these practices on the farm. So um, that's why we've created Farm Raise. I was lucky to meet my co-founder, Jace, who did grow up on a family farm in Virginia here at Stanford, and uh, we were both interested in tackling this challenge for farmers, and we've started Farm Raise to help do that. Uh, so we have been working on Farm Raise since November of last year, coming up on a year. Um, we incorporated in March and we launched our platform in August. So it's now available and I would welcome all of you on the, on the call today to try it out. Um, we are a one-stop shop for farm funding. So we have researched and mapped over 40 federal grant opportunities that you can go to our website, take our eligibility quiz, see what you're eligible for, and then we actually help you apply. And we do that by developing a farm funding plan that takes into account your unique farm goals and the deadlines for the programs that you match with, and then action items to help you make sure you're getting those applications in. And we've created what's analogous to a TurboTax for farm funding, where we've taken some of the jargon-packed forms that you have to fill out for some of these different programs. We've streamlined the process into one easy module, and we've uh, taken out that jargon and made it easier for you to understand what these programs are asking you when, when you fill out those applications. So our goal ultimately is to enable you to unlock funding through grants and loans to be able to make the investments in your operations so that you can achieve your farm vision in the long run. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Sammy. Um, Mark, I'll pass it over to you. All right. Good, uh, good afternoon and good morning to everybody. Um, my name is Mark Beans. I'm a credit representative at Farm Credit East. Um, I, got, uh, I got my start in uh, kind of the ag finance world with Yankee Farm Credit, which is our sister association that covers Vermont. Um, started up in, in St. Albans, Vermont, uh, up on the Canadian border, worked pretty heavily in the, the dairy and maple industries, um, and then moved uh, down to White River Junction, Vermont, um, and worked in uh, the, the timber industry, uh, pretty heavily dairy and, and maple as well. Um, and then in 2018, I got the opportunity to, to come down back home to Bedford, New Hampshire, um, and work with a diverse portfolio of uh, customers, pretty heavily um, equine, green industry, um, and commercial fishing. Uh, so my territory is uh, Suffolk County, Essex County, uh, and Rockingham County, New Hampshire. Um, but the Farm Credit East uh, territory itself covers uh, New York, Jersey, uh, and up through New England, um, excluding Vermont. Obviously, we, uh, we let Yankee play in their sandbox. Um, so uh, my agricultural background, uh, I worked at a dairy farm uh, through college uh, to pay for uh, rent and, and textbooks and kind of wanted to pair my uh, academic um, pursuit of accounting with uh, my interest in agriculture and, and Farm Credit East kind of uh, paired those two together perfectly for me. Um, farm Credit East and the Farm Credit System overall um, is a conglomerate of uh, associations that cover certain territories. Um, farm Credit East does lending, um, that's our primary um, focus, but we also offer um, tax planning, tax prep, um, and consulting. Um, we offer appraisal services, um, payroll services, um, and we also have a number of different consultants that work on different initiatives, whether it be generational transfers or farmers looking to, uh, to get into agriculture or significantly change their operation. Um, in addition to that, Farm Credit East um, owns with uh, Yankee Farm Credit and our funding corporation, CoBank, um, Farm Start, um, which provides a source of um, investment debt capital um, that's structured very similarly to a loan, but the regulatory requirements are such that we're able to work with um, starter farmers who don't necessarily have um, the underwriting requirements to meet a portfolio deal. Um, as far as different loan options that we have, um, we are a traditional um, commercial lender, so we, we try to match debt capital um, to our customers. Um, so it's not a super straightforward response. And uh, that's kind of my job is to work through with customers of what makes sense for farm credit and what makes sense for the customer um, to make uh, both farm credit and, and the farm uh, a little bit of money and, and more profitable for the next generation. Thank you, Mark. Um, and I know Mark and Sammy, you both spoke uh, in some instances in, in financial terms um, to, to level set. I know our audience is a swath of individuals that ranges from people who you know have been running their own business for decades, all the way to folks who have just gotten their first checking account. Um, and really with that background, some of those terms might be daunting. I'm here to tell you you're in the right place. Uh, we're gonna walk through basically three um, three buckets of questions as we go through this panel. So we're going to start with um, where to start if you're, if you're considering financing and purchasing a freight farm. Once you've started, what to expect throughout that process. And then as everyone knows in the world right now uh, is being currently impacted by COVID, what impact is COVID having um, in, today's, in today's financial systems? So with that, let's get going uh, in the where to start section. So Seeking out financing for your own business can be very overwhelming. Uh, many people aren't sure where to start in the process. So this is a question for both of you. Um, Sammy, I'll have you, I'll have you start. Uh, where would you recommend people start in the process of seeking financing? And what, what do they typically need to know at this stage? Yeah, this is such an important question. And um, farm raise, we're actually going through this now too, um, from a business perspective of raising finance for the company. So at a high level, um, I would say the first place to start is by being very clear in your vision for the farm. So think out 
this is this can be a very fun exercise think out five years ten years where you want to be with the farm is it pro providing your living full-time uh, that kind of thing um, and then try to get a sense for the intermediate steps and goals you need to accomplish in order to get to that vision and from there you can work to understand okay here's the the capital assets in terms of cash or land um, or infrastructure that I currently have today. I know that I need to get these other um, assets underway in order to get to my vision. And here's how much I think it's going to cost. And you can talk to experts about that. Extension offices can maybe walk you through what they think the cost will be, but that'll help you understand, okay, so I need to get this much uh, today in terms of cash or, or assets in order to move forward. Um, from there, you can start to think about how to get that uh, those capital assets. So um, there are pretty much three buckets. There are grant programs or cost share programs as one bucket. And that those types of financings uh, usually don't come with a lot of strings attached. You don't have to pay the, the grant back. Um, they have their own stipulations, which we can definitely dig into. Um, but that's a good option. The other two options are debt financing and equity financing. And I think most common in agriculture, and Mark will speak to this, is debt financing and, and accessing debt in order to purchase land or assets. Um, I'm really keen to help you all unpack the grant side of things. Um, and I would say a great place to start, of course, I think is farm raise because we've done a lot of work to map this landscape. One of the challenges, we've spoken with over 150 farmers about their experiences while building farm raise, and one of the biggest challenges is access to information. So although there are over $3 billion in federal grants out there, you have to go to different websites to figure out what's out there and, and how it works and what you're eligible for. We're trying to pull that all into one place that you can access for free to learn what you're eligible for. So we've created an eligibility quiz. It takes you two minutes to fill out and then it'll generate a list of your options. You can then learn how to apply and get help from our team or even talk to USDA after you have more information to try to get started and actually filling out applications for grants. Fantastic. And, and I can attest that eligibility quiz took me exactly a minute, 45 seconds, uh, and actually provided four grant opportunities for me in the, the scenario I was playing out. So it's a, it's a great tool. Uh, Mark, Mark, same question for you. I know Simi mentioned you, obviously you have uh, extensive experience with uh, the debt side. You, you're actually the one reviewing loans on several instances, so, or loan applications. Um, you know, what are some of those pitfalls? What do you recommend people start when, they, when they're considering seeking financing? Yeah, so not to completely take uh, take Sammy's point and, and run with it, but the kind of I look at where you want your your debt picture to be as bringing it back to driver's ed, right? You need to be scanning your lane of what's in front of you. You need to be looking ahead a little bit. And you also need to be paying attention to your competitors in the other lane and what what the industry trends are, um, how much leverage is right for your business. Um, that depends on your appetite for risk. It also depends on the industry standards um, because they fluctuate wildly depending on market conditions. Um, really the starting point to have a conversation with um, a loan officer at Farm Credit East would be to have that business plan, not only so that the lender can see what your plan is on paper, but it's also a great management tool for you to use and, and review. And business plans aren't something that you write and they stay that way forever. They may, in certain circumstances, if you if you hit all the boxes exactly right, which I can tell you almost never happens. Business plans are meant to be kind of a working document that you save your old copies and, and you work from that. Um, but that's a really great starting position. Um, in USDA, FSA, um, the SBA, um, or finding out which farm credit office is closest to you and giving your loan officer a call, I know that the application process seems extremely overwhelming and I have conversations with people that we don't even get to the application process, but our job is to help you understand what farm credits perspective is in the lending relationship. And we don't want people to feel like we are unapproachable or not willing to have a conversation, even if you're looking for financing maybe five years in the future and you know that you're not in a position to, to extend and leverage up and get more debt right now. 
So kind of knowing how much you want and kind of knowing the ins and outs of what your business is going to drive as far as expenses and profitability goes is going to be a great starting position. And that's all accomplished within the business plan. Fantastic. Um, I think you both gave great insights there. Um, so you, you've made me comfortable. I'm willing to seek financing now. Um, so I'm considering starting that process. We constantly get the question, you know, what do I need to prepare? Uh, when I'm going to the bank, when I'm going to apply for a grant, what do I need to have ready? Uh, and Mark, I'll, I'll have you start, uh, start with the responses here. Yeah, so once you've, once you've got to this point, um, depending on the lending institution that you're dealing with and the commitment size um, is, is pretty heavily driven on what's required. Um, so a good thing to have, no matter what your commitment size is, is two to three years of your federal tax returns. Um, if they're in a virtual format, that's really the best. That way you can just pop them over to a loan officer because most lenders use tax returns as the income statement. Um, and we know which are cash expenses and which are um, bookkeeping expenses and we back those out and then we have a conversation about it. Um, having a, a balance sheet, which is basically all of your assets and all of your debts, both personal and business and other, any other businesses that you have um, together and readily available makes it much easier um, and quicker. That's usually the data gathering process is usually the longest part of the process and sometimes the most nerve wracking because the customer has the expectation that we're looking at the loan uh, and we have the expectation that we're waiting to look at the loan until we have all the information. So also just the communication, um, pick up the phone, call your loan officer, that's what we're here for, shoot us an email. Um, and if there's questions about where, where we are at in the process and where it's headed, and what we need to get to there, just ask the question um, because sometimes um, the communication breaks down a little bit and it's important for everybody to be on the same page. It puts everybody at ease that's involved in the process. Fantastic. And I know uh, we at Freight Farms have put together a business planning tool um, recently that will actually self-populate an income statement, a balance sheet, and a cash flow statement to support that loan application. So for that exact purpose, Mark's speaking to when you're building out your business plan. Um, Sammy, same question, probably more focused on the grant side. You know, what are things folks need to get together? I know FarmRaise um, has an interesting uh, support model here on that, that grant application process. Yeah, um, happy to answer this question. And, and I'll say sort of the, the theme is to know that grants vary greatly. Um, and so I would say when you're first considering a grant, you want to have um, your business plan in mind. You want to understand the types of projects that are really going to move the needle for your operation in the coming years. And have a prioritization list of the things that are most urgent to you to get done. Um, because that'll help in thinking about what you're eligible for. That'll help you refine your to-do list in terms of which grants to apply for and how to organize yourself around that. And that's what we help you do with our farm funding plan. Um, and then it's actually pretty simple with grants. You don't need tax returns. You don't need a lot of financial information. For a lot of the grants are kind of bucketed in two categories. So there's conservation oriented cost share and grant programs. And then there's business development, marketing, um, that type of a grant program. And for the conservation programs, you do need some information about the land that you operate on, either uh, evidence of a, a deed if you own the land or a lease if you're leasing the land with, with someone else um, owning it. You'll need some information about the location of the farm, of the fields that you operate, if that's relevant. Um, you'll also need some information about your income threshold. So at a high, high level, you know, where are you within the set income threshold for a lot of these programs? That's one of the key eligibility requirements. Um, for the business development aspect or for those types of grants, you need to have a really good sense of the projects you want to take on on the farm and be able to communicate those projects well. Um, that's also something that 
you can get help from farmers doing or talking with other farmers, just getting practice talking through your goals and understanding how to um, how to say those well and, and, and represent what you want to do. So much more simple in terms of the actual paperwork you need coming into a grant, what the, the real work happens as you start writing the grant, um, you'll, you'll compile a lot of uh, a lot of information that you'll submit to the grant making agencies. I will say one more thing, which is that for some USDA grants, you have to have a DUNS number and a SAM number. So you actually have to go online and register. It's free to do. Um, but these are identification numbers for your business or your entity that the government will use to develop a contract with you if you're awarded the grant. And that process of getting a DUNS and SAM can take between one to three weeks. So I would encourage all of you to even just do that now if you're thinking about grants so that you have it out of the way and you can pull those resources when you need. Fantastic nuggets there. Um, thank you. So we've submitted our application, whether it's for a grant or for, uh, for a loan. Um, I'm gonna ask you each individually. Uh, so, so Mark, uh, you know, you, you've walked several people through the, the process. They've that have received funding. Um, when, hoping you can speak at, at as detailed a level as possible uh, to what that process looked like for that customer that received funding. So folks can kind of get a, get a glimpse of what success looks like, thinking if you can even speak to obviously not particular individuals, but you know, what, what are average interest rates you're looking at, you're looking at um, average term lengths, uh, and again, let's let's contextualize it. If I were applying for a, for a loan for a freight farm, you know, what would those details look like for that? You know, as a as an applicant, would I need to bring letters of intent or other customer guarantees? Um, hoping you could kind of break that down, help us peek behind the curtain. Sure, sure. So from from my perspective, um, rates and terms. As far as uh, we'll, we'll start with terms. Um, typically. We, uh, in the past, with your, with your previous um, model of the freight farm, we, we would do a, a five-year term and 40% and down. Um, and the reason that the down payment was, was so high, and uh, we've talked with freight farms actually, is um, from the lender's perspective, we didn't quite know the resale market for these container farms. I think um, we're starting to, to see a little bit of a sales study, if you will, to see that there, there is a secondary market for these farms. Um, and we just didn't want to put the customer in a position um, where the, dep the real depreciation on the asset was going to outpace the loan um, because it sets you up for basically being in a negative equity position, um, which is fine as long as the, the loan is getting paid, right? But also respecting uh, that we wanna do right by the customer, um, just because the loan gets paid doesn't mean it puts you in the best financial place once that loan is done. Um, terms, we would do a five-year term on it. Um, I think we would probably stick to that. Um, kind of looked at this as a short-term asset, similar to um, a tractor or any other type of row crop. Um, type of thing. Obviously, it's got a lot more going on with it um, than than just a single implement. Um, and rates rates vary quite a bit. We've kind of seen the rate market in 2020 um, be slightly volatile in favor of of people looking to borrow money. Um, so for your your average loan um, at Farm Credit East on a variable rate side, we would be looking at like four and a half percent. And Farm Credit East. Um, is an association where we are owned by our members. So it's very similar to a credit union. Um, and what that affords you is a patronage dividend. So it's a cash dividend. In fact, it effectively brings your interest rate down 1.25%. So you're looking at an effective interest rate after you're done paying the loan of 3.25, which for commercial lending, I can tell you is extremely, extremely low. Um, it wasn't too long ago that we would have the same conversation and look at the same risk portfolio and we'd be talking about 6%, 7% interest rate um, for a loan of, of this size and the risk profile that goes with it. Um, anything I'm missing, Alex, that you asked, as far as peeking behind the curtain, and so I think timeline is very important. Um, so from a completed application um, to a decision, uh, 
we are required to give a decision within 30 days. I can tell you that this type of financing doesn't take that long of an underwriting decision. Um, once we have the information and we get it in, um, we try to get an answer as quickly as possible because it lets us move on to the next step and it lets the customer move on with their next step and their planning. Um, and a lot of times if we have what we would consider a denial, it's usually not a no thanks, we're not interested. Um, it's usually a no thanks, here's the points that we can't do this. And is there a different way to work the deal? Maybe we have a lack of capacity and we need more money down. And if the customer has the ability to do that, it makes sense and we can do the deal. Um, so there's people behind making these decisions. It's not just a, an underwriting model that spits it out as a yes or a no. Um, and we, we really try to find every way we can to get to yes. Um, and I think that's, that's what makes us a little bit different than, than some of the cookie cutter lenders. Um, and I think I've hit all your points, Alex, I'm sorry. <laughs> you have, no, I appreciate it. And I'd all like right. to enforce uh, one point, which is oftentimes we get asked, you know, I need 100% financing, which I completely understandable. Not everyone has cash sitting in the bank. I think when you're considering a loan um, through Farm Credit, who is a preferred vendor uh, or, or finance lender, um, there's a, you always need to bring some skin in the game. So you always need to have some sort of, whether it's money, collateral. Um, and if you think of it on the, on the flip, if you're investing in someone that has no skin in the game, why, why would they, why would they, what's their incentive to succeed? Um, so just want to reinforce that point for a lot of folks. Sammy, uh, on the grant side, so you, you, I'm going to go back to my scenario where I, I had four grants available. Um, could you similarly kind of help us get a peek behind the curtain? Let's say, you know, I had taken that eligibility quiz and I, I, I was, I got the four. Um, do I submit applications for all four? Um, does farm raise help me with that? Could you just give a little more detail? And I know you mentioned every grant is going to be different, um, often because they have different governing bodies, different decision-making structures. Um, but if you could generalize, um, or if possible, honestly, give a few different examples to show what that, what's, what the detailed differences could be. Yeah, this is great. Um, gonna get deep into the weeds here with grants with you all. So um, I mentioned that there are two buckets of the types of projects grants are oriented towards conservation and business development. Um, we can drill into that further we can also think about grants as in terms of how they, they differ in their application processes. So there are some grants that are just standard forms. And one example of that would be the Natural Resource Conservation Service of the USDA has an environmental quality incentives program. For that program, you just have to fill out eight different PDFs and file them with the USDA. You don't have to do any narrative grant writing. Um, those forms can be somewhat confusing, which is why we've created the TurboTax version of them and FarmRaise to kind of guide you through that process. But that's how that, that works. On the other side of the spectrum, you've got narrative-based grants. And these are grants that you actually have to do a good amount of writing for, and you have to draft up a project budget. So they can take significant time. I've written a successful narrative-based grant before for a nonprofit in Iowa. Uh, we were awarded one and a half million dollars to uh, help farmers um, adopt conservation practices. It took us four weeks to write that grant. So that's, and I'm saying that because that's a very, that's kind of on the farther side of the spectrum where you have higher input, but a pretty big reward, one and a half million dollars. Um, and farmers can access that program. It's called the Conservation Innovation Grant directly. I don't think it's going to be super relevant for a lot of you here um, in the freight farms world. Um, so I'll talk about some of the, the grants that are more relevant probably to your efforts. And I saw a question come through the Q&A about, you know, are grants better for getting started or are they better for expanding? And it's the latter. Um, grants are probably much more effective for you once you've got your farm started and you're looking to expand your market your customer base, the products you're offering, or you're looking to do something different with your production system, whether it's related to sustainability or um, kind of being more efficient in production. And um, some of those programs that I think are really relevant to this group are the SARE program, which again, full disclosure, I worked there before graduate school. 
Um, so I might have a little bias, but it's an awesome program for, they have four regions. Uh, you do have to write a, a narrative for that one. Um, the grants usually open in the fall. So a lot of the SARE grants are open now and closing in November or December. You still have time if you're interested to get your grant applications in for that. Um, you'll have to write at least a few pages about your project and a few pages about the budget, how you plan to spend the money. Um, SARE grants are unique in that you have to do research. So it's all about empowering farmers to do research on the, the farm. So as long as you can iterate, you know, how, how your idea is going to produce a research project that they, you can then share with other farmers, um, you'll be able to, to get that grant. Uh, another great option for this group is the value added producer grant, which is up to $250,000 and it's oriented at helping you with your marketing and with adding value to the crops that you're growing. Um, there's a farmer in Minnesota that we just interviewed who got that full grant. So the full $250,000 to hire a consulting firm to build out their branding. So developing a logo, uh, working to develop labels, doing market research on a new product they're developing, which is Snack Sticks, their livestock farm. Um, but that would be a great one for, for you all to consider. But that is 40 to 50 pages of writing. So just know that there, depending on the program, there's a lot to get into. And the last thing I'll say um, before handing it off, because I'm talking a lot here, is um, you will want to be sure you understand what's required for you to fulfill the grant. So lots like the SARE grants, the research grants I talked about require you to report each year on your progress. And they'll also be giving you some of the grant funding up front when you get their reward, but they'll actually want to reimburse you along the way as you have costs. So grants don't necessarily mean you're getting that cash right away up front. You might have to have some cash on hand to pay for the project and then the grant will reimburse you. So the timeline for grants is a bit longer than loans. Um, you can also apply for multiple grants at once, even for the same program. So if I wanted, I could apply for SARE and I could submit two different proposals. Um, and I think that diversifying, if you have the time, like applying for a lot of grants is actually a really good strategy because they are competitive and you'll have a higher chance of winning if you put your, your name in the ring um, more than one time. Thank you, Sammy. <clears throat> um, and I appreciate giving all that context. Um, one point you hit on the grant is more for folks looking to expand. And I know a lot of you on the call today are looking to get started. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm seeing the Q and A's come in, so I'm tempted to just dive straight in. But I think one that's hyper relevant is if, if I don't have any experience and I have no background in farming, um, and I'm probably looking more at you, Mark, you know, what options are there out there for me for someone getting started, an experienced farmer? Maybe I didn't have a business background. I know Farm Credit has a Farm Start program. I'm wondering if you could speak to that. Sure. So um, definitely Farm Start is an option. Um, I mentioned it at the, at the beginning. Um, we, own, we own that organization um, with, a, with two other Farm Credit associations. Um, and what, what that is, is it allows us to be pretty flexible on our collateral requirements, our down payment requirements, um, and kind of the payment structure that we're looking for. Um, also because it's uh, structured as an investment and not debt, it looks and feels a lot like a loan from the customer's perspective, but it allows your loan officer to be your farm start advisor. So they can provide you with um, certain insights and opinions that a lender necessarily uh, wouldn't necessarily um, be super forthcoming with just because of lender liability concerns. Um, we don't have that barrier and farm start because it's an investment. Um, so you get our honest feedback. Um, it's, it's not meant to uh, have farm start run your business. You're the owners of the business and you make those decisions, but um, we provide insights and what you do with them is kind of is up to you. Um, as far as farm start goes, it's not specifically for freight farms. Um, it's for uh, all types of agriculture that we do business with. Um, and uh, I apologize, I'm gonna be a little wishy-washy. Every, every deal is different. So if you feel that you don't uh, meet traditional underwriting guidelines and you feel like debt capital is still a good option, um, farm start's a great talking point. 
um, and we can talk about where you're at, how much you're looking to leverage, and where you see yourself going, and then kind of make a plan from there and find a way to yes. Perfect. No, that's <laughs> phenomenal. Um, and you know, I, we're getting an influx of questions, so I want to move to that quickly with our remaining 10 minutes. Um, I'll ask you both if you can kind of keep your responses as succinct as possible. Just so we are getting a lot of questions, which is great. Thank you to those of you out there. Um, I know those who weren't able to attend will appreciate your curiosity. So I'm going to start with you. I'm going to, going to go rapid fire real quick. Um, Mark on the farm credit side. So are your loans applicable for purchasing a greenery or only for traditional farms? Uh, both. Both are eligible for us. Fantastic. And what is Farm East's lending limit? Um, so I'm not at liberty to discuss our hold limit, but what I can tell you is that um, we partner with other associations. So we have um, we have loans in the portfolio in excess of $100 million. Um, so I don't really think the hold limit's going to be a, it's never really an issue for my portfolio. It will not. <laughs> Yeah, and to reiterate, in case those on the phone don't know, current MSRP on a greenery farm is 115,000. Um, two follow-up ones: What is farm farm east loan amount percentage? Um, you know, what would be an, an expected down payment versus what Mark or what uh, Farm Credit would would provide? Um, so uh, if you if you came to the table on on a greenery with 40% um, down, um, we would be happy with that. Um, as the down payment gets lower, the other credit factors need to offset it, basically. So if the earnings are really strong from off-farm sources or projected sources, um, then we can get a little bit more flexible with that. Um, so I would say 30 to 40% down. Perfect. And our last question, are loans fixed rate or variable? We do offer fixed rate. I didn't bring it up because they are indexed daily. Um, and it depends on where you fit in the risk matrix. So we do have fixed rates on, on short-term and long-term loans. Fantastic. Got a few for you, Sammy. Uh, so on the farm raise side, does farm raise offer grant writing tutorials, workshops, or other types of assistance? We, the, the short answer is yes. The long answer is we are developing those services today. So although you can't access them right now, we're actually building out capacity to offer grant writing tutorials, to have templates available on the site here in the next six months. So please stay tuned for that. Fantastic. Um, and then next question, are your resources uh, applicable for purchasing, purchasing a greenery? And I know you've spoke to some of them are more applicable for traditional farms. I think you mentioned some of the ones that were um, more, more tailored to greeneries. Um, would you, yeah, I guess. Yeah, um, definitely applicable to greeneries. Um, Again, and I wrote this as answers to some of the Q&A, so I don't know if you can pull that up and see the answered Q&A questions, but I wrote down the names of the grants I mentioned. Um, but I'll say them again, value added producer grant, sustainable agriculture research and education grant, and then there's grants through the Ag Marketing Assistance Program, um, local food promotion program and farmers market promotion program that I think would be applicable. I'll also very quickly say um, we are also expanding into loans and impact capital and we'll be matching farmers with those opportunities on the site as well. Um, so we'll be able to help folks that are getting started with their operations more in the coming months as we onboard some of those opportunities. Fantastic. Um, now let's talk a little bit about, those were some of the, the higher ones. Um, we'll, we'll get back to some of those Q and A's. So if you submitted a question that wasn't answered, um, we will, we will get to that, but just they do want to touch on COVID. I know it impacts everyone. Uh, and from a financial system there, from a financial perspective, you're asked, you ask yourself, are, are my loans pro protected? Um, how do loan structures plan to deal with COVID going forward? Um, not sure if it's impacted the grant availability side, but I think in Mark, it's probably more of a question for your, your end of the spectrum. Have you seen COVID impacted lending at all? Um, as far as lending, no, but as far as how we've structured loans or restructured loans, um, yes, every, every case is different. I know in the green industry, there was a lot of concern, um, the timing of COVID versus traditional green industry um, marketing time frame that that um, Easter to Memorial Day kind of where they make 90% of their income was a big concern. Um, we restructured a lot of debt. Uh, happened that they had one of the best years they ever had in the green industry this year, which was was great. 
Um, but finding a lender, whether it's farm credit or not, that um, is upfront about the relationship is the most important thing. And um, we can get our loan paid back maybe four months later if that helps the business float and survive. Um, that's really not what we're concerned about of uh, not rejiggering debt. Um, so there can be a lot of flexibility within some guidelines. Fantastic. Um, got a few questions here. Again, think they're probably more tailored to your end, Mark, but Sammy, if, if they're applicable all to the grant side of things, please, please definitely chime in. Are there minority, minority or veteran uh, focused loans available? Um, um, so from Farm Credit East perspective, um, we do have, a, we call it a YBS um, incentive, which is young beginning or small farmers. Um, and we tacked on veterans on there as well. Um, so there's some incentives from a cost perspective on interest rate and also some of our um, other services. There's a discount for the first five years of doing business with us. Um, as far as government grant programs, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to, to Sammy. She's more the expert in that realm. Yeah, and I'll just say, so the USDA through the Farm Service Agency, FSA, offers loans and, and they earmark um, a percent of their pool of funds every year for beginning farmers and underserved producers, which includes veterans and minority farmers. Um, and that's actually true for the grant programs as well. So um, for like the Natural Resource Conservation Service grants, there's a special pool of funding set aside uh, for beginning farmers, minority farmers, and veterans. And um, you also get a higher cost share rate. So EQIP, the environmental program I mentioned earlier, typically reimburses you 75% of costs. But if you are in one of those categories of identity groups, you get reimbursed up to 90%. Fantastic. Um, I'm gonna end with this question. Um, to date, Freight Farms has farms in 45 states and 28 countries, and we're expanding internationally as the technology is proven in newer countries, um, especially as those countries face you know, a, a series of challenges. What financing, and I recognize farm raise and farm credit are very much focused on domestic, but based on both of your experience, what financing options are available to purchases outside, purchasers outside of the U.S. for a freight farm? I'll uh, give you each kind of a minute to respond and then we'll, we'll close it out. Um, sure, so I, I did, uh, I was scrolling through the q and I was looking a little bit and I saw a couple questions about um, the Canadian farm credit system or is there one? Um, there is one, actually the, the current CEO of Yankee Farm Credit used to be um, pretty heavily involved with the, the Canadian farm credit system. So um, I'll uh, pop up, uh, find a farm credit in Canada and send that over to Alex for those of you that are interested. Um, as far as overseas goes, uh, farm Credit East doesn't get involved in international lending, um, and I can't really speak to um, what type of uh, lending systems there are throughout throughout the world, but I'm sure that they exist. Yeah, and I'll say I'm very ignorant of, of the grant programs that are available internationally, but one thing we're doing at FarmRaise is that we've had a lot of interest from folks across the world, and this value prop of mapping the landscape and we're actually collecting names in a wait list so we can understand which countries have the most demand for this and decide how to prioritize resources in the coming months and years around expanding into other um, areas of the world. So please, you can email me directly if you're interested and I'll put you on that wait list. Um, my email is sami at farmraise.us. Happy to share out in the chat later on as, as well. Fantastic. Well, I want to be respectful of both of your schedules and times. Um, thank you so much, Sammy. Thank you so much, Mark. I think I speak for our audience in saying this has been illuminating uh, and really appreciate the detail. Uh, we, for those of you in the audience, we hope you enjoyed hearing from our experts. Um, we hope that helped you answer some questions to get your own fi financing. Um, I know we get thousands of individuals interested in financing tends to be one of the biggest obstacles to getting a freight farm. So, so we're hoping this helps. Um, if you do have questions that were not answered, please reach out to your account executive. Um, if you don't know who that is, please reach out on our website uh, and you will find out who that is uh, very quickly. You'll be receiving a recording of this event tomorrow. Uh, and with that, just want to wish everyone a great afternoon. Thanks again.